Hello, Namaste. I'm back with the second lecture of the say of the module five, where uh, we were discussing about the GS data quality. I hope uh, all of you have understood what do you mean by a data quality, how data quality is important for your data. Okay, but uh, now we'll go into much more details of what do you mean by a positional accuracy. So that is uh, also very important. We discussed partially this in the previous class, but we would also look at more aspects in this particular class and sources of error. Uh, so we discuss some errors that may creep in, but we did not discuss what are the sources of error. So we will look at source of errors, how do we rectify it also in the, uh, the next two lectures. And uh, as I said, uh, the concept that I would cover in today's class is measuring positional accuracy. How do you measure a positional accuracy, lineage, then factors affecting the spatial data quality, sources of errors in spatial data and factors affecting the reliability of spatial data. Reliability is extremely like your completeness and logical consistency, reliability is extremely important in terms of your spatial data. How reliable is your data? So you have to give the uh, give an idea to the user that how uh, what is the reliability aspect in your spatial data. So that is uh, extremely important when you are actually putting out this data in a public domain that can be used by many people. So if that has to be done, then you are then the reliability aspect has to be considered in a proper way. So when you are looking at the measurement of positional accuracy, this is normally measured in the times uh, in terms of root mean square error. Okay, the square root of the average squared errors that is if you have a predicted error and the actual error. Okay, so it is the it is the root mean square of the averaged errors that we uh, that is there in the entire data set or the entire data layers that you consider that is uh, that is how it is measured. So it is usually uh, expressed as a probability that is not no more than p percentage of the points will be further then far, far will be far, sorry it's not it's not further it's farther than yes distance from their true locations okay so p number of p percentage of points will be farther from the distance yes from their true location so how many is displaced from the true locations loosely we say that rmsc tells us how far the recorded points is in the gis are from the true locations on the ground for example, this had to be your location. Okay, when you have mapped it in the database, it has shifted to this location. So this is this is the shift that you see in your true locations. That is what is measurement by the RMSC. So once you calculate the RMSC from the real world to your data model, then whatever the data that you have recorded can be easily shifted by so many points or so many uh, units. So that uh, that is how you improve your data. How we improve your positional accuracy? For example, when uh, when I am actually looking at a satellite data, the first thing is we go to the field, collect the data, we know what is the position of that particular data, come back, tie the position to the particular uh, information. So, for example, intersection of a uh, maybe road, a building that is already there from a very long time, uh, very easily uh, identifiable building. So, all of these are the informations that uh, you have to collect. So once you know this, tie the information to the real world uh, coordinates or real world information that you have already got. So now you can compare what is the error. So with that, shift the particular point so that you almost have the zero uh, pixel error or zero error in terms of, or zero RMSC. If that you can achieve, then you have the best positional accuracy for a particular data. So it can. Also, there are various things that you have to consider when you are looking at positional accuracy. The first thing, first and the foremost thing is put it in the same coordinate system. Look at the spheroid and datum, it has to be same. If it is same, then there is no issue in terms of, uh, I mean most of the maps would overlay. Okay? The first thing that you have to look at, once both of them are matching, they overlay. The next thing that you have to look at is what is the kind of measurement locations accuracy that you have considered if you have considered exact measurement locations accuracy then you know where that particular point has to be so you can shift a particular point or if it is extremely accurate then you can maintain the data set as it is then the media stability what kind of stretching folding wrinkling of maps or photos may have happen if you have a physical map okay 
then human drafting and digitizing errors this also can be uh, can be easily found out nowadays there are huge number of tools uh, that they have developed in in terms of uh, under understanding this interpreting errors okay so using those tools most of these errors can be either removed or rectified then you have resolution or accuracy of drafting and digitizing equipment so when you are actually looking at a drafting equipment you know what is the accuracy of that particular equipment so that is extremely important in terms of looking at drafting or a digitizing uh, digitizing accuracy so if you have understood all of these okay in your uh, positional accuracy then your data is quite accurate in terms of measurements okay so please keep in mind the first thing that you have to look at is what is your coordinate system what is the projections that has been used whether they match the datum uh, that is a reference point that we are uh, they have used and what is the accuracy of measurement on the real world to your data model that you have to uh, probably look at other things are digitizing errors that normally if you are now digitizing now automatically you can uh, look at it without any issues but these are the issues that you have to keep in mind when you are actually looking at errors the major errors okay so let me give you some examples for example here the first thing is horizontal accuracy so when you look at this rmac of a building polygon is based on comparison of horizontal coordinates that is if i am trying to see this polygon it is dependent on the horizontal coordinates and all the nodes of the footprints of a building in gis with the corresponding reference value on the ground that may be through your gps or any other uh, uh, ways okay so you have to look at the corresponding points here look at the horizontal coordinates first okay of all of these buildings fine or look at the sample number of these buildings then look at the nodes of footprints or the coordinates of those nodes of the footprints to the real world match it to the real world you know what is the difference if there is certain difference let's say a difference of 2 meter in a uh, in a image that i have tied so shift your image by 2 meters so correct your image by 2 meters or your whatever the accurate measurements that you have already done those measurements will be uh, uh, will be having an additional of 2 meters okay so such uh, uh, event such things has to be taken into consideration when you are looking at positional accuracy vertical accuracy vertical may, most of them may not need an uh, vertically accurate data because most of them work on a horizontally uh, horizontal data but when you are looking at a vertical uh, accuracy then it is extremely important for example when you are looking at this okay you have a building here uh, so this when you are looking at comparison of a uh, vertical coordinates of all of the nodes of the footprints of the building in gis with the corresponding reference values so there are certain values which you can consider to be as a reference for this building so you have to look at those reference values also there are certain measuring instruments which can be used to measure the height of the building so if you have those measuring instruments so you can measure the height of a building uh, and use it for uh, uh, such uh, analysis so in order to see whether it matches the real world phenomena the next thing that is uh, that we have to understand is lineage how the record of that particular data has been created in the database then how it has been transferred how it has been used applied and now used by someone else so how it has come over age so that we have to look at in terms of lineage so it it is actually it is also an indicator of accuracy how accurate is your data if your data is completely old without updation and you are trying to find out today's scenario of uh, maybe growth so you will not be able to understand it because your data would not uh, give you exact uh, point of uh, in that particular map then origin of data comprise of source materials including date original application data capture method this i have already explained in my previous lecture digital maps can be established based on photogrammetric measurements or by digitizing the existing maps so the best me method to get accurate uh, values is, is using the photogrammetric measurements and uh, if you if you are not very good with photogrammetric measurements then look at digitizing uh, existing maps 
So, attribute data is taken from the public registers or from direct in from the field. So, this source has to be mentioned in your data. But this may not be sufficient only to know the data source, but also the data collection, how the data has been collected, even if, uh, if that data has been collected from certain place. So, how that particular data has been collected to represent in that place has to be known. Okay? How the, then how the method of uh, preparation of that particular data is also another point that you have to look at. The data generated from the source whether it is satellite, surveying, etc., are always preferable to maps as they are con consequently subjected to less errors. So, you prepare it as maps and uh, because of which you can look at what is the accuracy of that particular map and then use it in, into your database. So, there are certain factors affecting the quality of the spatial data also. So, when you are looking at this data itself is a first quality that is affecting the spatial data. For example, are all your data up to date or not? For example, that is what I mentioned in my uh, previous slide as an example. If your data is 10, 15 years old and you are trying to model today's phenomena, it may really not capture a, a certain phenomena. Let us say, we are capturing a phenomena of how the urban growth is happening uh, maybe in a particular city. So, what you try to do is that uh, first thing that you take here is you have uh, let us say a uh, uh, satellite data of 1990s okay, and then you have a satellite data of 1995 and a satellite data of 2000. Okay, You have uh, extracted the land use. Now, what you want to do is that you want to know what is the, the growth that is there in 2019. But without understanding what is the growth between 2001 and 2018, it may not be possible to find out what is the growth in uh, 2019. Why? Because for example, a particular city, there may be an industrial region that has been set up in 90s, there may be an uh, IT hubs that have come up in uh, 2000s and there may be certain uh, agents that have fueled uh, the growth in 2000, 2005, etc. The growth may be higher spikes or lower spikes. So, if you can understand this kind of dynamics, then only you will be able to model it for 2000. Otherwise, that particular area where the growth may be in a higher spike or maybe in a lower spike will not be captured effectively by your model and that leads to an uh, issue in terms of understanding. Okay. Then the completeness, is your area coverage complete or partial? When I also say this, your completeness in terms of also collection of data. You should also con, uh, complete, you should also have an heterogeneous data features that is that is spread all over the data region. It, it should not be only in particular region. For example, if you are looking at urban area and a buffer, your data collection should be both in the urban area and also in the buffer. If you are only collecting only in the urban area and not in the buffer, then your data is actually not come incomplete. Your the way you are collecting data is actually inaccurate because it is not representing the true world, true world phenomena. Consistency of uh, your data is another important factor in spatial data quality. So, when I say map scale, the standard uh, description, the relevance, the way of it, way it is represented, so all of this should be consistent okay? or when you digitize it, make it consistent. So, then uh, it would be much easier for you to uh, look at the data quality. Then accessibility, for example, the formatting, the copyright, the cost involved. So, all of these are some factors that affect the accessibility. Then accuracy and precision, okay. As I uh, said, both data may not be both accurate and precise or it, it may be accurate and pre or precise depending on the situation it is in. So, look at the accuracy and precision in terms of observations, density of observations, positional accuracy, attribute accuracy, qualitative and quantity of both, then topological accuracy. So, when I say positional, it is almost quantitative and when you are looking at attribute accuracy, it is more of qualitative, sometimes it is quantitative. So, look at both qualitative and quantitative aspects and topological accuracy. So, if you have looked at all of these, most of your data is uh, will be quite accurate in terms of representations. Sources of errors in data, if there are certain source of errors in data, the way it is captured, way it is measured, so that may also affect, uh, add as a factor that is affecting the quality of a spatial data. Okay? So, when we look at that source of error, the first source and of error is a user, that is through data entry and output faults. Okay? That is the first thing that a user makes. 
okay so the first source of error the major source of error that i would uh, assign is the source of error in a data so also the choice of a data model this is extremely important in terms of when uh, what kind of data model you are using so if a, if a user is using a, a wrong data model then uh, sure to uh, then your entire spatial data is not going to be propagated in a proper way then the bias so that bias should not be there it has to be a neutral uh, neutral agreement between any phenomena in order to assess that particular uh, the data properly numerical errors in numbers may be uh, may creep in many times because of a huge uh, data sets limitations of representation of numbers by a computer this this may not be uh, valid uh, today but in certain old systems yes it is there are certain uh, uh, issues limitations when you are looking at limitation of representation then you have source of error in derived data and results of modeling and analysis so this is also extremely important in terms of uh, understanding the error then problems with map overlay classification choice of uh, the analysis model so i have spoke about overlay and classification already then the misuse of logic logical consistency if it doesn't have then you have a source of errors in data so please look at all of these then i have also given some uh, the probable source of errors these are inherent instability of a phenomena itself for example random variation of most phenomena building size if you are looking at five years and if there is some uh, issue as uh, changing building size and you are taken that as a reference point so probably that uh, also can creep in as an error measurement instrument uh, comes as an instrument error or a surveyor error it may be model used to represent data that i've already sp uh, spoken whether what kind of spheroid it has been considered what kind of classification system it has considered then data encoding data processing and finally the thing that you have to look at in terms of data error is propagation or cascading from one data set to other so if you have an error in da one data set it actually propagates to all other data sets because of which the crunchiness in the data set may uh, increase and that may lead to more errors so to just give you an example here uh, if we uh, if we consider these lines that i have uh, digitized on this particular map here okay so i'll just use uh, some other color i have digitized all these maps here okay so if you look at this this is an 1 is to, uh, a two, uh, it is a 1 is to 20000 map so if you are looking at this particular map if this is the error and the, the thinnest line that you can see is 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters so at a scale of 1 is to 20000 if we uh, if we look at it it is almost close to 12 feet or 12.8 feet to be exact so which means to say that you can uh, look at 4 meters that is equal to 12.8 feet a, a, a small deviation in this will give you a 4 meter error uh, that uh, 4 meter error on the ground and 12.8 uh, feet error uh, sorry 12 4 meter error on the map and 12.8 uh, feet error on the ground so which means to say that the registration accuracy would be going wrong so when you are trying to measure the distance when you are trying to measure the building area etc then you are actually making a mistake so when you are looking at machine preparation the coordinate rounding error is in the form of storage and manipulations many a times and some other unknown errors can also occur this is, these are some errors that i have put forth but when you are actually working you uh, you will understand there are a lot of other challenging errors that you may see when you are looking at the spatial data so uh, when we are looking again at uh, this thing the word error in the uh, in the in this uh, context uh, does not include only faults but also statistical concepts the means where uh, for example the mean variations so that is also an error in terms of uh, the spatial data where if you have considered the entire data you have considered the mean of that data so what is uh, what is uh, uh, the amount of error that it can creep in also is another kind of error the most uh, difficult source of error are those that can rise as a result of certain kinds of processing okay many a times we use certain processing when we do not have an access to highly computer high computing capability systems uh, so we use an approximate model of 
or uh, processing methods which are computationally not in intensive that can also uh, provide certain errors into the entire data model. Uh, so, they can be detected by the knowledge of data along with the data structures and algorithms that are used. So, if you understand all of these the algorithms, the data structures and the data that have been used, then these errors can be easily removed from your database. So, the, the factors in case you are looking at reliability of data which is extremely important in terms of uh, special data, how reliable is the data that has been generated by you uh, in case you are actually transmitting the data for different users to use in different applications, then the reliability is extremely important. So, how do you find out the reliability? The first thing that any time that you look at is lineage, the age of data. Okay? So if it is possible that old data are unsuited as they were collected according to the systems of the standards that are no longer used or in acceptable form. It can be this issue or it can be the old data that may not be giving the uh, information that is there today. Uh, for example, in 90s we had the data's data at a resolution, a satellite data at a resolution of 72 meters and the 36 uh, meters. But today we have a data at 1 meter resolution at a centimeter level resolution. So, if you are comparing a centimeter data with uh, data which is 72 meters or even 1 kilometer data then you that is where your the first reliability goes as far as your data measurement is concerned. Whatever you are measuring, measure at uh, so that the sources are actually same. Basically, weed out the old data which, uh, which may not be effective enough in capturing the phenomena. Then data sources may simply be old to be useful or relevant to current GIS product uh, projects as I explained. Then the past collection standards. So, this is extremely important. In today's context, the standards of either collection, representation, depiction, all of these have been standardized to a very large extent. So, past collection standards may be quite unknown in terms of or may be erroneous. So, in order to uh, have uh, or uh, understand have a better data model, it is better to actually avoid old data than uh, and, uh, and create a fresh data and which may actually affect your entire data model. If these factors are considered, your data may be quite reliable in terms of ac accuracy of that particular data. For example, here I have taken up a survey of India topo sheets okay? and here is the Google Earth. Now, Google Maps can go up to a uh, distance of uh, you, you can get a information at a 10 meter distance and the accuracy of that information as per uh, as per many sources that uh, has been represented in research it is plus 3 to plus 6 uh, meters okay can uh, vary upon uh, across regions to ten, at least 10 meters so now if you have that accuracy the horizontal accuracy is about 10 meters and when you look at the soi topo sheet that is there uh, that has uh, norm, that is normally not updated uh, very frequently and has been uh, in uh, time from 1970s onwards. So, if you are trying to look at these two, then this old information may not be logically uh, important in terms of analyzing this particular data that is there in today's context. But this can provide a vital source of information for your data model. Okay? For if you are trying to find out what was there in 1970s and what is uh, not there today. So, in, in terms of extraction of what was there, but then corrected according to today's standards may be the best model that you are if you are looking at the old data versus the new data. Okay? The corrected data can be then used to compare with the new data. So, correction levels of what kind of correction can be done can be very well known for a GIS user. Anyone who has the who has some experience of handling GIS data can easily uh, start looking at such phenomena where they can easily extract information and then convert it in such a way that it, it becomes more uh, reliable data in terms of accuracy. So, you have to look at two, three different uh, uh, sources of the same data. Once you have understood the source, then you will be able to understand how reliable is uh, this particular data. Then the area information or the coverage. So, yeah, it may be that uh, most of the data that you have considered is uniform. For example, uh, 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 if you look at some of my application, 
some of the areas that I have uh, considered. Uh, uh, for example, if I have uh, if I have working on Kolkata, the the entire Kolkata metropolitan region. So if I have considered 10 kilometer buffer, so may, many of the places, uh, many of the years, I could not get at least 10 percent of that data of the spatial data that is available in that 10 kilometer buffer. So what we did, we tried to always use a similar buffer, neglecting that uh, that part of the region. So if you have removed that entire part of the region for your entire course of the day, so that would give you some meaningful information in terms of uh, reliability. Otherwise, if you have uh, in one year you have that set data set and other one you do not have a data set, you cannot compare it uh, pixel by pixel and understand what is the change. Okay, so always having the area information or change should be on the same same polygon or the same uh, region that you have considered. Options uh, can be used to obtain more data, surrogate information from remote sensing also. So map scale and resolution. So this is also extremely important in terms of uh, when you are uh, you are looking at the reliability. So whatever the maps are used, may if you are if you can try and get the large scale map, it it would be uh, more important in terms of extraction of topological details. Uh, but usually we have more detailed legends in this uh, uh, large scale map. So look at large scale map. So again, let me repeat. We understood in my, in my previous session, we have two, uh, uh, I mean we have large scale map and we have a small scale map. Large scale map gives you a large amount of details, whereas the small scale map gives you very less details. When I say small scale maps, these are 1 is to 1 million, 1 is to 50,000 map. When I say large scale map, it can be compared to 1 is to 1 million, 1 is to 10,000, 1 is to 25,000 is a uh, large scale map. Okay. So, uh, keep this uh, in mind. So, uh, look at the information that is actually necessary. It is important that the scale of a map matches the required area of the study. So, for example, if you are trying to study the entire uh, subcontinent of, in, uh, I mean, uh, entire India as as a study region, and if you are trying to use uh, one is to five thousand or one is to ten thousand map, it may be foolishness because uh, when you are trying to process this entire data set, it may not uh, work out in terms of uh, giving you an accurate data or generating an accurate data. Instead, if we use uh, data at, uh, if, if we use certain uh, ways of generating this information, wherein you are using maybe 1 is 250,000 maps or one yeah, even 1 is 250,000 maps, then it can be extremely uh, eventful in terms of mapping the entire uh, uh, India uh, uh, and extracting its details. So, and small scale maps most probably as I said have insufficient details. Okay, So, uh, now the user has to decide small scale map has insufficient details or it has uh, very less details whereas a large scale map has sheer volume of details. So, the computing capability here versus an, uh, uh, no computing capability that is necessary, very less computing capability that is necessary. So, all of these factors has to be considered before you look at what is the reliability of your spatial data. Okay. Then density of observations, what, what is the density of observations that you have, uh, maybe reasonable measure of data quality, not always it is an important part, but there, there, uh, there should be certain ways of analyzing the density. Then relevance, the variations in the frequency in pixels are represented by a histogram for example. So this can be helpful in terms of uh, looking at what are the training sets that has to be considered, what are different training groups that has to be considered and what are the distributions. For example, the, more, the modal distributions that it can have in when you are trying to uh, classify a particular data. So, these are certain things that you have to look at and the last thing is that uh, is very important is accessibility. So, as I, free, uh, as I previously said, not all data is freely accessible. One set of data might be free to use in the in one country and might be the state of secrecy in the other country. So look at what data at a specific country it is used or it may be in, even between the state, even between the corporations also. Cost and format problems also bridge a gap. Now the most data that uh, Indian India is producing is interoperable. So most of them are the interoperability standards. So looking at uh, this, uh, yeah, this may not be a much of a big issue.
extensive and reliable data is often quite expensive to obtain or convert yes this is the very important part most of the private generators who actually generate extensive reliable data are ex extremely expensive in terms of obtaining this particular data then you have the cost and copywriting so cost i have already spoke the major uh, thing is copyright permissions for each and every country varies and it may be advised to check legal situation in each of this country and most importantly the copyright permissions of the data that may be available publicly but in order to use it in your own data model it may need certain permissions certain cost that may be involved in order to obtain those permissions is also important so without that it may not be put into your it may not be used into your database okay so other error that may come in uh, for the uh, checking the reliability of data is a numerical error so when you are looking at the computer processing cap capability or the ability to store and process the data at required precision that is also very important so if your precision length is six points so if your computer is able to store only at two points then you are that is where your numerical error starts then there is in insufficient uh, precision may be lead to calculation errors also for example if you are calculating uh, the length of a road or area of a polygon so it may also create a certain amount of precision errors in your data so number of polygons will actually populate it to much bigger errors okay so uh, then uh, the last uh, thing that i would uh, speak in this particular class is the fault due to assumption concerning the exactness of spatial data so we we think that we assume basically we don't think but we assume that most of the sources of data that has been considered is uniform and digitizing uh, procedures that one may have used is infallible so which which if uh, has to be understood you have to look at the data probably once you look at the data you will understand how uh, how consistent or inconsistent that particular digitization has been so uh, when when you look at most of the people who extract map boundaries uh, they look at only intersecting boundaries and reconnecting the line network which may not be true in the real scenario boundaries can be sharply redesigned and drawn so it has to be properly redesigned and drawn whenever uh, you are considering the boundaries all algorithms are assumed to be run in a deterministic way okay all algorithms are considered to be true all algorithms are considered to be the best so but it may not be really true in terms of real world scenario so that these are these are certain things that uh, we have to use uh, when we are looking at how we are mapping in any of the traditional ways that are there and how we are mapping in the digital ways so if uh, these ideas are considered then it would be the same traditional way of mapping and uh, error that accumulates into the map when you are creating a map or a data output so to summarize today's class we looked at measuring positional accuracy how different methods of positioning uh, uh, measuring the positional accuracy we looked, looked at the lineage and how the data has been transferred over a period of time then factors affecting the spatial data quality errors in the data uh, spatial data then factors affecting the reliability so we looked at all the factors uh, starting from how the generation happens and what is accessibility and the cost that is necessary then uh, probably in the next class we would look at the pixel accuracy for example when you are using a raster data what is accuracy measures how do you calculate an overall accuracy how do you calculate a kappa statistics how do you say that whatever the land use that you have generated using a raster data or a raster data model uh, uh, you can uh, satisfy the criterion of uh, providing the accurate data so we look at all of these in probably in the next class so till then uh, have a nice time thank you very much